Rumor has it that Disney briefly considered axing Rachel Zegler from Snow White recently after her insane anti-Trump tirade on Instagram. Obviously, this comes off hard to believe because we are mere months away from the release of this movie in theaters and there is no going back at this point. It is, in fact, too late, but... There were inside sources telling Daily Mail that Disney was looking for options to get rid of her because this has been, what, not strike three, but like strike 10, 11, yeah. maybe at this point. It says an insider explains Disney would love to be able to tell her to stop talking, but it's simply too late. They had talked about removing Rachel from the role several times when it was shooting in 2022. She's a loose cannon and caused issues during the production because she didn't agree with how the film plot strayed from the classic movie's plot. That's something I really wanted to emphasize. It yeah. sounds like they, if this inside source knows at all what they're talking about and has any real insight, yeah. it sounds like Disney production had tensions with Rachel Zegler because she was trying to keep the live action remake faithful to the original movie. I don't believe that for a second. That's what they're saying. I, no, I read it in the article. I had to sort read it Sort of the way, the way that Jenna Ortega it's had completely... to go toe to toe with the script writers on Wednesday, telling them, hey, look at this line. A character like Wednesday Adams would never say this. Completely... And then she saved the character from becoming super cringy completely at odds with everything else she said at that original d23 interview i don't believe that for a second but knowing that the film had already been completed at least before reshoots at the the 2022 d23 mm -hmm. interview maybe it was like an overcompensation thing like she's really like heavily celebrating how different the one how, how different the remake is from the original because she was told that she needed to have that that outlook on it. Uh, I just I just I, find that really surprising that the source would say that. I find it surprising too. So surprising that I don't believe it. <laughs> like it was Gal Gadot's idea the whole time for she, her to never yeah. fall in love. I love that. I mean, I do think that Gal Gadot deserves more backlash, not more than Rachel Zegler, of course, but she was in the same video saying yes. she's not gonna fall in love with the prince. She's not gonna be saved by the prince. She was also emphasizing that very she has, heavily. She has, she has years upon years of goodwill stored up that negates any of that. She, she just won't, no she one will listen to anything track she record. says. She doesn't have a track record of, of <laughs> annoying people. And in general, like it or not, Gal Gadot comes off as a more experienced, classier performer, classier professional who, like the last time we covered this, somebody said, on the stage, Gal would turn to Rachel and be very ingratiating mm -hmm. and wanted to share the stage with her. Who knows if that's real or not? I'm sure that they have their own political disagreements that make things hard to come by. Awkward. But they said that Rachel couldn't even feign that same level of fakeness. Look, I say it all the time. Be, if you're going to be fake, be fake and do so in a way that's actually going to make you money. Right. Yeah. yeah. Noting that the actress could simply have turned down the role if she had so many issues with the plot... This inside source continued, quote, she read the script. If she didn't like it, then she should have not taken it. It wasn't until after the film was wrapped that she really started creating drama. She's been a nightmare, but, but there is nothing they can do to control what she says. Everyone is well aware of how difficult she is. We're, um, they say right now it is way too late to shelve the film. As much as people think that her recent comments and controversies will hurt the film, it's likely not the case. If anything, it generates more publicity and attention to the film, which leads to increased sales. No, 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 They're also saying the film is Snow White and it could really sell with anyone in the lead. That's not exactly true either. Okay. Because look at her track record as well. Yes. Her entire career, first off, her first actual breakout role West Side Story. was Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. Nobody went and saw it. Tragic flop. Um, what else has she been She was in, in um, Shazam. Okay, Shazam. What, Nobody did went Shazam, Fury of the Gods do well? No. No, did not. But um, she was fine in it. 
Songbirds and Snakes, the yes, uh, Hunger well. Games prequel, yeah. that one did well. We sang her praises in that. Look, I thought she was fine yeah. in both Shazam and uh, Hunger Games. I, I don't think that she's um, necessarily an awful actress. I think she's about as talented as anybody that age who's not really all that special. <laughs> She's fine. She's she's perfectly serviceable. But here's the thing. Perfectly serviceable does not get you the the leash needed to say the things that you're saying. Mm -hmm. And everything that person said before about how bad press helps a movie is not true anymore. Well, it, it did help with It Ends With Us. Th that was drama, not what that was multi-sided drama. Not everybody hates this one person drama that was about... intrigue around the cast together yeah. not one person saying stuff that insults 50 percent of the general public and who they vote for no right that that's to mention the the trump rant yeah. that she posted on instagram if you weren't aware of that she said in this instagram post she hopes that trump's supporters and voters and trump himself quote, never no peace. And she basically said, F Trump and all of you are trash if you voted for him. But I then would, she walked it back with a little apology statement a few days later. I would like to give these people some advice. What they should start doing, write all this out, save it up. And I just mean really save up all the mean things you want to say. This is going to require a little bit, bit of an investment in yourself. It's going to be delayed gratification. So think all these things, write out all the mean stuff and put it in your notes app and save it till like week four of the movie's release. When the movie has made the majority of its money, then go out and say all of the awful stuff yeah. you want to say. Like I'm, I'm down. At least then I know that you're smart enough as a business person to wait and try and hoodwink <laughs> us into spending our money. I will tip my cap to you if you do that. Not before the movie's release. Not in week one. Not in week two. Not even in week three. I would invite you to just not do it at all because that's kind of the approach that I take with most of these things is like, how important are your opinions really? Well, this will come up later when we're talking about Wicked and Cynthia Revo's antics. But if they did that, they would probably realize that a week later they didn't feel as strongly about whatever it was they wanted to tweet about and yeah. it wouldn't be a problem in the first place. But I think people like Rachel Zegler prove a principle in Hollywood. Yeah. This is the pattern of not just individual performers, but also big studios in Hollywood failing upwards. Yeah. Because you can see in each of her projects, it's not like she has been going up, you know, incrementally, exponentially becoming more successful with each project, but she's getting more roles anyway. And Disney is doing the same exact thing where it's a totally hit or miss, more often miss than hit mm -hmm. for them, and yet they continue just getting the roles going mm -hmm. on. And um, look, West Side Story, not her fault. Ensemble, sure, yeah. ensemble film doesn't matter though if it's her fault or not. Um, it's your star power suffers nonetheless. But I mean, her her star power has nothing to do with her acting. She is not known for she she is not like a uh, an opinionated actor with the resume to back it up. She's done a couple of movies that are okay, but nobody remembers those. Like say what you want about annoying Mark Ruffalo, but people still know him. <laughs> more people still know him as the Hulk than annoying Mark Ruffalo. Sure. People in this space know him as annoying Mark Ruffalo. Mm -hmm. People in this space know Chris Evans as annoying Chris Evans. Everybody else knows him as Captain America. And I can still go back and watch all of those Captain America performances and applaud him for doing great work. Okay? First do the great work. Then be the annoying person. Well. More advice from me to you. Speaking of Marvel and also of failing upwards for Rachel Zegler... Despite all of these rumors that Disney has put her in the doghouse, mm -hmm. there is a new rumor from one of these scoop accounts that Marvel is considering Rachel Zegler for a mystery role in the MCU in one of these upcoming movie projects. Yeah. This is from My Time to Shine Hello. He said, Marvel Studios wants Rachel Zegler for a role. Which role do you think she should play? And then I see... One person in the replies say, Citizen number one in the opening disaster scene as an asteroid strike incinerates her village, removing all life from 40 mile area, guaranteeing no future in any Marvel project. You know what they could do? They could turn could they her do? into like 
Like Marvel needs their own Stan Lee cameo. Like a lot of people are saying they need to turn Deadpool into the new Stan Lee for Marvel and have him cameo in every movie. Maybe what they do is they turn like this and this would work in Rachel Zegler's favor because it would show some humility and it would be really funny. She shows up like Kenny from South Park as a different character in every Marvel movie and promptly dies. Oh. And promptly gets killed in some type of That's like. That's not a bad idea. In some type of like sky beam, a building falls on her. I guarantee you, within three movies, the public sentiment around her would shift and it would turn positive. Yeah, I think if she uh, showed that she were willing to be the butt of the joke sometimes, yeah. that would help immensely. Like she, she shows up to say something annoying and then the <laughs> villain kills her by accident. Like yeah. a building just falls on her. Yeah, well, she's probably not going to be in anything DC going forward. So I'll tell you what, she's surpassed Brie Larson. I bet you Brie Larson will get more uh, leeway now. She's surpassed Brie Larson As in, in annoyingness. In annoyingness, <laughs> not in career success. Mm -hmm. Not quite yet. William Thompson sent us 20. Mary would make the perfect Snow White, pale skinned, blonde, looks like the sun hasn't hit her skin in 20 years. Well, I'm not, I would have to have black hair for the role. And I don't know if I'm willing to do that. Yeah, like, have you ever uh, used like those uh, filters on the, on the apps that turn your hair a different color? Yeah, I mean, I had black hair for a while. Yeah. I, I dyed it black and it was not exactly a look. But yeah, this is this is the rumor. Rachel Zegler is going to be in the MCU because it couldn't possibly get any worse, right? We will have to wait and see. I've given you many suggestions here today, Marvel and Disney. I suggest you take all of them and use it to your benefit. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.